Amen. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then you, did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw that, you did not change your mind and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This then is our text. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, to be master of ourselves, that we may become the servant of others. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. It is one of those rare times, rare even for the Bible, when the Holy One, blessed be he, chooses not to speak through prophet or priest or pastor, but God says, I'll take the microphone myself this time. When that happens, extra careful listening. At the opening, the Lord says, no more with catchy slogans. The people, the public, generally had been consoling themselves with slogans such as, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. That intriguing phrase was being used as explanation for ongoing misfortune. And intriguing as it was, the Lord instructed, no more, no more slogans. Now we love them and they come in quite handy. What goes around comes around. More is sometimes less. Life is tough and then you die. God set God's self up on the side of no more such phrases and intellectualizing about a present state of affairs, particularly difficult, unpleasant. I don't want to hear it anymore from you. Rather, pay attention to the particulars and specifics of your own behavior. That's an interesting slant because 
the thinking I have heard is the Bible and religion in general is about generalities, is about thinking in ways abstract by scholars. When in fact, when it comes to the Bible, it is just the other way around. Humans deal in vague generalities, God in concrete specifics. Do what is lawful and right. Do not set your eyes on idols. Feed the hungry. Notice that. Notice it's not a generalization. Think about who might now be out of work. Consider those who have been on welfare and how that gets perpetuated. Nothing of that at all. Feed the hungry. And on it goes. Take no interest on money loaned to a neighbor. No ogling a neighbor's wife or daughter. Such a one who behaves in this way pronounces the Lord good. They are right. They shall surely live. God then takes the matter deeper. And here again, it is done in specifics and concretely, not in vague intellectual terms. Concrete, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord. If you will pardon, I wonder if the Lord minds my broadening that out just a little. Says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death, the punishment, the failure, the loss, the failing, the falling of anyone, but rather that they should turn from their ways and live. No pleasure in God's part on punishment. Does anyone have pleasure in that? Oh, you bet humans do. In the prophet Ezekiel's day, 600 years before the coming of the Lord Jesus, his entire country of able-bodied citizens were taken into exile to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, the potentate, then bound Judah's king Jehoiakim and executed all of his children before his very eyes, then blinded King Jehoiakim so that the last sight he would ever remember was that of his own children being executed. Anyone have pleasure in that? Absolutely. Human beings have a record of doing just that, a long, long, long record of us doing that. The Roman Empire practicing it, public executions, crucifixions, where all were drawn out to sea. The Elizabethan English did much the same. They were public spectacles, all for sure meant to frighten compliance, but also entertain, and crowds were assembled to view that entertain the lynching of black men in America, wide entertainment. Human behavior has amassed quite a record for itself of what we take pleasure in. I won't even go into what professional sports do this day and the demand that there is for bloodletting. I suppose it's not surprising that we conclude God does likewise with God's opponents. But the Lord himself is absolutely clear and certain about that. And the holy book is concrete, specific, detailed to say so. God says, 
I take no pleasure in the death, the punishment, the loss, the failing, the falling of anyone but rather that they should turn from their ways and live. If you will stand, we will affirm what it is we do believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only beloved Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly above all that we ask or think, <laughs> unto the only wise God, our Savior, God, the beloved Son, God, the Holy Ghost, be as tribute as is most justly due, all wisdom and majesty, all might and mercy, now and forevermore, ever and ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>